God bless you. Yeah. What's your name again? Christine. Christine? John. Awesome job. Ellery. John, nice, nice to meet, to you. meet you. Awesome job. Jesus Christ gave us two commandments to follow. Love the Lord God with all your heart and love your neighbor as yourself. Don't put anything before God because the Bible says that's idolatry. Anything that you exalt, anything that you lift up, that you make more important than our Lord Jesus is idolatry. So today, Make sure that you put Jesus first. Make sure that Jesus is more important than money. Make sure that Jesus is more important than material, materialistic things. Lift up the name of Jesus. Cry out to Jesus Christ and make Him King of your life. God bless you, brother. The name of Jesus is above all names. The name of Jesus casts out demons. The name of Jesus can heal the sick, can give the blind sight, can make the paralyzed get up and walk. The name of Jesus is so powerful that it drives demons crazy. Through that mighty name of Jesus, we can find eternal salvation. Through that mighty name of Jesus, we can have eternal life in the kingdom of God. Today is the day to repent. Repent, repent. The kingdom of God is at hand. The kingdom of God is in our grasp. If we die in our sin, we will have eternity in hellfire. But if we cry out to Jesus and turn away from our sin, we can inherit the kingdom of God. That kingdom of God, that everlasting water, where you will never thirst again. Jesus promises that you will have new bodies, new minds. He will replenish everything about you. The gift of Jesus Christ does not have a price on it. The gift of Jesus Christ cannot be bought. That gift is priceless. That gift of Jesus Christ is the only way to enter the kingdom of God, to make it to heaven. If you try to enter heaven any other way, the Bible calls you a thief and a robber. But today, today is the day to repent and cry out to Jesus Christ. Cry out to Jesus. Don't wait till tomorrow. Tomorrow's not promised. You can walk in the street and get hit by a car. You can get shot. You could even choke on a piece of food. But with that mighty name of Jesus in our life, when we repent and turn from sin, we know that we will inherit the kingdom of God. We know that we have Jesus on our side. Jesus Christ said, if you proclaim my name in public, if you speak up for me, I will speak up for you in front of the angels in heaven. But if you deny me, if you deny me in public, the Lord Jesus says he will deny you in front of the angels in heaven on judgment day. Without Jesus, we will not inherit the kingdom of God. Now, if we think about Jesus' laws, love the Lord God with all your heart and love the na your neighbor as yourself. If you love yourself, you know that you don't want to spend eternity in hell. So that's why we are out here today, to give you truth, to give you the gospel of Jesus Christ, so that you might not perish, 
so that you can enter the kingdom of God. So if we accept Jesus in our life and turn from a life of sin, you can enter the kingdom of God. You can inherit the kingdom of God. Being a good person does not get you to heaven. Muhammad, he can't get you to heaven. Your pastor cannot get you to heaven. The Pope can't get you to heaven. Buddha can't get you to heaven. Only Jesus Christ can get you into heaven. Jesus Christ is like a lawyer. If you go to court without a lawyer and you got caught red-handed, without a lawyer, you're convicted, you're guilty. But Jesus Christ is the mediator. Jesus Christ is the one who's going to stand up for you on Judgment Day. Don't deny Jesus Christ. Don't live in sin. Because the Bible says if we live in sin, then we are living for the devil. The devil came to steal, kill, and destroy. The devil is the king of lies. But Jesus is the Prince of Peace. Jesus is truth. If you open that Bible and you look into it, you'll find prophecy after prophecy after prophecy. I have a book at my house filled with prophecies. And you know what prophecies are? They're predictions. There's no other book in this whole world that is filled with hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of predictions that all came true. There's no excuse these time and days. There's no excuses. Everybody's heard the name of Jesus. All you need to do is pick up that Bible and do your research. We have free Bibles here. We have water. We have clothes if you don't have clothes. We have information about Jesus. Today is the day for salvation. Come receive prayer. You can accept Jesus into your life today. He'll wash away your sins. Jesus died on that cross willingly. He knew what he had to do. The Bible says, before Jesus took that cross, he was in prayer and he was sweating blood. Jesus Christ was whipped so bad, the Romans, they took stones and little pieces of metal and bone and they put them on the end of their whips. So when they whipped Jesus Christ, those pieces of metal and bone got stuck in his skin and ripped out his flesh. His beard was ripped from his face. A lot of us, we see the movies of Jesus on the cross. He had an underwear cloak. But the truth is, Jesus was hung on that cross naked. He was beaten so bad, he was unrecognizable. But Jesus Christ knew that he had to die for our sins. No one else died for your sins. No one else died for you except for Jesus Christ. If you deny Jesus Christ, you deny eternal life in heaven. Don't deny the Creator. Don't deny the Son of God. He loves you. He loves you so much that He died on that cross and rose in three days for your sins, for my sins. The Bible says not one, not one is good enough to enter heaven on their own. Not one is without sin. We're all guilty. But the difference is, are you going to accept Jesus Christ in your life? Are you going to receive that gift of eternal salvation in the kingdom of God? The Bible says, For God so loved the world, He sent His one and only begotten Son, 
that whoever believes in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. Now that word believe is an action word. It doesn't just mean believe that Jesus is Lord, because the devil believes that Jesus is Lord. But that action word, believe. Jesus said, if you love me, you will follow my commandments. So the question isn't, do you, does Jesus love you? The question is, do you love Jesus? Jesus said, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. Now those two laws that Jesus gave us, love the Lord God with all your heart and love your neighbor as yourself. Those two laws cover all the Ten Commandments. Those two laws cover everything that the Bible says that we shouldn't do. You shall not steal. Well, if you love your neighbor, you wouldn't be stealing. You shall not covet. Don't be envious of what your neighbor has. That's not love. You shall not murder. But Jesus says, if you have hate in your heart, you're a murderer. We need to love our enemies as well as our friends. Jesus Christ said, even the hypoc hypocrites, even the pagans love their own family. Even the evilest people in the world love their own friends, love their own kind. But the question is, can you forgive? If you have hate in your heart today, the Bible says you will not inherit the kingdom of God. If you have hate in your heart, Jesus says you're a murderer. We need to let it go. If somebody robbed you, forgive. If your enemy is thirsty, give him something to drink. If your enemy is hungry, give him something to eat. Today is the day for salvation. Today is the day to let that grudge go. Today is the day to forgive and repent and accept Jesus into your heart. Tomorrow is not guaranteed. If you die tonight, do you know where you will go? The only person that guarantees you eternal life is Jesus Christ our Lord. The only person, the only thing that you can put your hope in through the Lord Jesus, He has the eternal gift of life. You can't buy that gift that Jesus offers. It's priceless. We have free information about Jesus of how you can accept that free gift of eternal life. Come today. Cry out to Jesus and repent and turn from your sin. It doesn't matter what you've done in your past history. It doesn't matter how bad of a person you might be. Jesus Christ can wash away your sins. Jesus Christ can change a murderer into a man of God. Jesus Christ can change a drug addict into a sober-minded person. Jesus Christ worked miracles. He gave sight to the blind. He made the, the deaf hear. Jesus Christ says he will give you a heart of stone to a heart of flesh. Jesus Christ compares the church of God to the body, the body of Christ. Now when you accept Jesus, everybody in the body of Christ has a different job. Should the ear say to the arm that you're not as important as me? 
Should the I say to the leg, you're not as important as me? Everybody has a different job in the body of Christ. Some people are encouragers. Some people are preachers. Some people are giving. They're generous. They give to the poor. But whatever you do, make sure you do it in the name of Jesus Christ. If you give to the poor, make sure you give the glory to God. If you're a motivational type of person, if you give people encouragement, do it in the name of Jesus. The Bible says our works are like filthy rags compared to God. Just because you give, if you give without giving the glory to God, you're selfish. Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father in heaven except through Him. In the book of John, we got free Gospels of John. You can get the story of Jesus, His teachings. Jesus taught so many important lessons. Jesus spoke nothing but truth. Jesus Christ died for your sins on that cross. And He rose in three days. He kept His promise. Jesus Christ loves you. But the question is, do you love Jesus back? Because Jesus said, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. Without Jesus, we are lost. Without Jesus, we are hopeless. Jesus is the only way to enter heaven. Repent, repent. The kingdom of God is at hand. The kingdom of God, heaven, is in our grasp. And through Jesus, we can have heaven. Through Jesus, we can have eternal life. But if you deny Jesus, the Bible says, you will be cast into hell. And the only reason why I bring this up is because I care about you. The Lord commands it. We don't want to see anybody perish. Jesus does not want to see one person go into hell. But Jesus Christ does not send anybody to hell. We send ourselves by denying the Gospel. The Gospel means the good news. And the good news is, Jesus Christ died for your sins. That's the best news that you'll ever hear. A lot of people, we like materialistic things. We like nice cars. We like nice houses. We want to have a good life. But what about life after death? Don't you think that's more important than this life on earth? Life after death. Because that life after this, after this life is forever. God is outside of time, space, and matter. Because God created time, space, and matter. I'll give you an example. In Genesis 1.1, it says, In the beginning... That's time. God created the heavens, space, and the earth, matter. There you go, time, space, and matter. Now God created time, space, and matter. Jesus Christ is the Word of God. So God spoke. He said, let there be light. If Jesus is the Word of God, so Jesus took part in creation. The Bible says in John 1.1, 1, 1, in the beginning was the Word, Jesus Christ. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. In John 1.14, it says, and the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. In Genesis, it says the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. So we got God the Father who created we got the Holy Spirit who created. He was hovering over the waters. 
and we have the Word of God who created. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are one. The Bible says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. That means there's one God, but three parts, and those three parts are one. Some people, they can't get that, they can't comprehend that. But let me give you an example. Us as humans, God created us with a mind, a body, and a soul. So if we have a mind, body, and soul, that's three parts. But we're one person. That's exactly how God is. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Three parts, but one God. Those three together make God Almighty. God loves to use three parts. Take us for example, that's the best example. Our mind, body, and spirit. So these, those three parts, they make up one person. That's exactly how God is. In the book of Genesis, it says God created the heavens and the earth. But then it also says, let us make man in our image, to our likeness. So if Genesis says there's one God, but it says let us make man in our image, that's showing you the three parts of God. The Bible clearly says, clearly shows us how God works. Three parts, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And through Jesus Christ, that name, we can be saved. Through the name of Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, the Anointed One, we can have eternal life. Cry out to Jesus today. Tomorrow is not guaranteed. You know what? That's kind of true. The rain falls. I heard a story of a young man no, it's not that. who said, I'm not ready to accept Jesus. I got a lot of stuff to do in my life. I still got a whole bunch of other stuff I want to do first. And that young man died in his car on his birthday for no reason. There was no apparent cause. His heart just stopped. Today is the day for salvation. Just because you believe in Jesus doesn't mean you're saved. The devil believes in Jesus through Jesus. Believing in Jesus means obeying Jesus, turning from sin, and repenting. It's not a hard thing to do. Because the power of Jesus is so strong that he can turn a drug addict into a sober person. He can make a person that's paralyzed get up and walk. That name of Jesus is stronger than any other name. That name of Jesus brings salvation. Today is the day for salvation, the Bible says. Not tomorrow. The 10 o'clock sinner the 10 o'clock repenter dies at 9.30. The 8 o'clock repenter dies at 7.30. But the gospel means the good news. The good news is through Jesus, we can live forever. We can have eternal life. We can enter God's kingdom. And when you die and you take your next breath, where will you take your next breath after you die? Will it be in heaven or will it be in hellfire? The good news is Jesus died on that cross and rose in three days to wash away our sins. Not one of us has no sin. Not one of us is righteous enough to enter the kingdom of God without Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Not one. The Bible says not one. Is there anyone worthy? No. Jesus Christ is the only spotless lamb that walked this earth. Jesus Christ is the only one who was without sin. We need to follow his example. Jesus Christ gave us the perfect role model 
the perfect example of who we should be. Of, of, thank you. God bless you. Um, not, not, not on me. I got it at Lids. You could go to Lids in the mall. Yeah. Jesus Christ is the perfect role model. A lot of us, we look at these guys on TV as role models. These kids, they're looking up to these rappers. These kids, they're looking up to these movie stars. But the truth is, the perfect role model, the only person that was perfect is Jesus Christ. Let's look up to Jesus Christ, literally and figuratively. Look up to Jesus Christ in the heavens and cry out to him and pray and repent and turn from sin. And look up to Jesus Christ as your role model, someone that you can follow. If you follow in the steps of Jesus Christ, you will not go wrong. Jesus always said, I tell the truth. He always spoke truth. And the Bible says, no adulterer, no fornicator, no homosexual, no sexually immoral, no idolater will enter the kingdom of God. But all those people that I just mentioned can turn away from sin because you still have breath in your lungs. You still have life in your body. Jesus Christ said, come as you are, but don't stay as you are. So every single person that accepts Jesus and repents was a sinner. And that's why we get baptized. Because the baptism symbolizes the old person dying and the new person coming out of that life-giving water. That new person resurrecting like Jesus did on the cross. You go down a sinner and you come out a new person. And that new person is a follower, a disciple of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Cry out to Jesus today. Repent, repent. The kingdom of God is at hand. I can't say it enough. John the Baptist was crying out in the wilderness to all sinners, repent, because he knew, he knew that this life on earth is short. This life on earth, the Bible says, what is our life? Our life is but a vapor. It comes, it goes, and then we meet God. Our life is like a vapor. It comes and goes and we meet God. What is eternity compared to 20 years? What is eternity compared to 50 years? Even if you live to 100 years old, the Bible says one day of God's time is like a thousand years in our time. God is not affected by time, space, or matter. So there is no time in eternity. So when you die, it's more important to know where you're going to go than anything on this world. It's more important than your house. It's more important than your family, than your car, than anything that you have. Because when you die, whatever you are destined for, whatever you do when you die, whether you accepted Christ or denied Him. But the Bible says every knee will bow and every tongue will confess, whether in heaven or hell that Jesus Christ is Lord. You can't run from God. You can't run from that name of Jesus Christ. You cannot hide from God. You can try to avoid the subject. You can try to avoid the topic of Jesus Christ. But the Bible says one day, every knee, not some knees, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Even Satan himself, the devil, is going to have to bow down to Jesus Christ. Satan is the master of lying. The Bible says he came to steal, kill, and destroy. Don't 
give in to Satan's lies. Turn from your sin and accept Jesus in your life and repent. It's the smartest decision you'll ever make. The Bible says mockers and scoffers will have their place in the lake of fire. You can laugh at Jesus Christ all you want, but when you die on judgment day, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. It's better to do it now then do it when you're in front of God on Judgment Day. Not one will laugh at the Lord Jesus. Not one will smirk. Not one will mock Jesus when you die. So why not accept Him now? Why not make Jesus Christ your Lord while you're on this earth? So when you die, Jesus is going to open up the gates of heaven and He's going to say, Well done, my true and faithful servant. Don't deny Jesus. Cry out to Jesus Christ. He died on that cross for your sins. Repent, repent. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and turn to Jesus and turn away from sin. If sin is to the left and righteousness is to the right, when the devil comes knocking at your door and tempts you with sin, run towards Jesus. He will give you the strength that you thought you never had. Run towards Jesus. Take part in the body of Christ. Everybody has a job in the body of Christ, no matter how big or how small you are, no matter how weak or how strong you are. Everybody can have a job in the body of Christ. Whether it's making peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, and handing them to the homeless people and saying Jesus loves you. Or whether it's getting on the street corner and preaching. Don't live life for yourself. Don't live life like a greedy person. The Bible says no idolater will enter the kingdom of God. You can make anything an idol. If you put your car before God, you are idolizing your car. If you put video games before God, you're idolizing video games. Without Jesus, it's like going to court without a lawyer. You're already guilty. It's like being caught red-handed and you step up for court. You want Jesus Christ to have your back on Judgment Day. You want Jesus Christ to say, well done, my true and faithful servant. The Bible says our works are like filthy rags compared to God. If you're feeding the homeless, if you're encouraging people, but you do it without proclaiming the name of Jesus, if you do good deeds without giving God the glory, the Bible says your works are like filthy rags. So whatever you do, whether it's serving people with, that are less fortunate than you, whether it's encouraging your neighbor, whatever you do, give God the glory, Jesus Christ. Everybody can serve God. Serving Jesus is like getting recruited by a, a, a major league baseball team. It's like being recruited by the best of the best, the creator of this world. We can serve the living and true God, Jesus Christ. We can serve the creator. Repent and accept Jesus today. Tomorrow is not guaranteed. I was saying earlier, if you go on YouTube and you just type in people that died and went to heaven or hell, you're going to see hundreds and hundreds and thousands of stories. You're going to see monks. You're going to see all types of people. But the, the thing that they have in common is every single person comes back proclaiming Jesus Christ is Lord. Every single person. Because when you die, when you take your last breath, where will your next breath be? Will it be in eternal fire? Or will it be in the kingdom of God? 
or you'll never thirst again.